talking and listening and helping people to learn about HIV and AIDS are two of the things I do a lot. Really? It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to the very first episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. I am your host, The Stimulator, and this is a blog that will cover all aspects on why we are so fucked and what we can do to maybe unfuck ourselves. Does that make any sense? Okay, well, let's get things warmed up. In global warming news, the hurricane season is officially over, and global warming naysayers are already making a stink. Check this punk ass out. There's not a relationship between hurricanes and what they call uh, global warming by man-made gases. That was Republican Senator Jim Inhofe. Now this motherfucker is a piece of work. In 2003, this homophobic, torture-loving redneck said that global warming is a hoax. But now, even with this lackluster hurricane season, Jimmy seems to be changing his tune. It's, the, it's not the matter of whether or not it's getting warmer. What it is, is, is there a relationship between man-made gases right. and global warming? And there isn't. Fucking hilarious. To back him up a little bit more on this is Fox super scientist Steve Ducey. Or is it Ducey? You made a, a, good, a great point earlier. You know, there is some sort of global warming going on. The temperature is just a little warmer around but, the world than it was a while back. But there's been no scientific connection. They simply can't say, you know what, you leave your car idling or you use a lot of hairspray and you're poking a big hole in the ozone <laughs> or something like that. It amazes me how far people will go to justify their excessive use of hairspray. But anyway, one thing Fox News will not report on is that global warming is already killing off some species and forcing others to evolve more rapidly. If you believe in evolution, that is. Camille Parmesan, yes, Camille Parmesan, associate professor of integrative biology at the University of Texas, conducted a review of over 800 scientific studies on the effects of human-induced climate change on thousands of species. She found, and I quote, Global warming has caused extinctions in the most sensitive habitats and will continue to cause more species to go extinct over the next 50 to 100 years. In corporate media news, Project Sensor released its list of the 25 most censored stories of 2006. Among them are, at number 21, gold mining threatens Asian Andean glaciers. At number 20, bottled water, a global environmental problem. At 19, destruction of rainforest worst ever. Number 11, dangers of genetically modified food confirmed. And at number 3, oceans of the world in extreme danger. If you want to dig deeper into this list, just go to projectcensor.org. And finally, last year was that yearly display of American gluttony. No, I'm not talking about Thanksgiving, I'm talking about Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year. Thousands of dumbasses woke up extra early on the day after Turkey Day to buy the newest, cheapest shit made in China. So every week at uh, It's the End of the World as we know it and I feel fine, I will try to change or modify an aspect of my life and document it here. As a North American, I am part of the biggest collective of polluters and consumers in the world. Well, I decided to become part of the solution. Over a year ago, I switched my car for a bicycle. Yeah, you got it. I am not spewing out any more greenhouse gases every time I go to work. Plus, I get exercise and I feel sexier all around. Also, my stress level dropped. No more road rage, expensive gas, insurance bills, repair bills, parking tickets, and I never have to deal with the cops. The bicyclist who weaves all over the road in front of motorists is asking for trouble. Speaking of bikes, Vancouver's critical mass for November was pretty fucking cool. Here's a rider sharing some of her enthusiasm. It's all about sticking together like a big bus. And um, if, the, if you're at the front, then you get to decide where to go and people will go along with, with the, us or you. And um, if you're at, oh, one thing I think about is at the front, if you come to a red light before you get there, to stop because that's a really good way to bunch up because the main thing is we all stick together. So if you attend critical mass in your town and are handy with a video camera while on a bike, send us your clips. Email us at bike at submedia.tv. You, I want to take you to a gay bar. I want to take you to a gay bar. I want to take you to a gay bar. Wow. 
This week our guest is Scott Biving of The Lost Film Fest. The Lost Film Fest is legendary in the world of underground film. Scott travels around the world 200 days out of the year showing cool shit like the clip we just saw. To find out how this whole thing got started, we're going to connect with Scott live via the internet. Scott, how are you? Are you there? Hey, could you guys can like not talk? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. So when did you decide to start touring with underground films? In about 2000, 2001, there was a film called Breaking the Spell that started to go around the activist circuit. Uh, it was about the WTO protests in Seattle in 1999 and I thought it would be a complete shame if this footage didn't get out into the world because usually footage like this is uh, excluded from being covered in the mainstream media. And who was making these films? People who never made films before were taking video cameras and nonlinear editing systems like a computer, you know, Adobe Premiere or uh, Final Cut Pro and putting together these fantastic pieces of work that were just inspired like you know like a punk rock song you know it was just like a m moment of inspiration that brought about these um, these films any funny stories from the road so I showed up in this one town in Germany and people in Germany are very serious uh, and they you know take things very very sorry people in Germany are very very serious so um, I showed up in town in my little car, it's called La Poubelle, uh, it sits in a garage in Switzerland right now, and, uh, and it drives very, very slow, so I was late for a lot of my shows. I showed up about 15 minutes after the screening was going to start, and I hopped into the room, and I said, hey everybody, uh, sorry I'm late, we'll get started in a couple minutes. And uh, one of the people came up and said, you must start the show right now, please, we've been waiting for 15 minutes. And I said, Look you, if it weren't for us during World War II, you guys would be speaking German. And they all looked at me with this blank stare like this. One, sa one person said, but we are speaking German. Yeah. So, I don't know, so it's just completely ridiculous. Well, thanks for your time, Scott, and uh, good luck on the road. And that about wraps it up for this edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. If you have comments or suggestions or hate mail, email me, hate at submedia.tv. Have a great week.